Hi guys, I'm Patty with Studio R12 Stencils and today I'm going to show you how to do a distressed wood painted background and I'm going to show you three ways to do fake planks on wood. Stay tuned, you're going to want to see these techniques. Hey everybody, welcome to another awesome painting tut uh, DIY tutorial. We are going to paint this joy to the world sign. We put a screw in it so we can hang a wreath. You don't have to do that, but I think it makes it just really 3D and really awesome. I'm gonna show you a couple ways to do these plank boards. We wanted planks, but we didn't wanna to go to the expense, the time, the shipping to get it made for us. So you can take any old board that's at your house and you can make it into a plank board with these techniques. Okay, I've spit out some brown water-based varnish, um, not varnish, well, <laughs> brown water-based, I will get this right, brown water-based um, stain. And the stain was a little bit thick, so I'm getting in with my poly brush and I'm gonna go into some water. I'm just gonna thin that down. It's important that we have the, um, and I'm gonna blot it on my paper towel. It's important that we have a brown color behind so that when we are sanding to make our distress and when we are doing this, we can have that background back there. So, just gonna go ahead and get it sheerly um, stained. And then this is an affiliate link. These are honey bottles and we'll put a link down below. Um, it's an Amazon affiliate link um, so that you can access the things that we're showing you in the show that we don't carry on Studio R12's website. Okay, so we'll get a sheer coat. Just one layer will do. Then, so that's nice and solid. I'm just showing you on a smaller board so that you will know this step. I love it when people give me all of the, all of the details. Make sure you pay attention to the um, timeline down below. We do timestamps on these videos. So when you have a timestamp, that makes it so that you can skip through if you already know how to stain. Um, you'll be able to skip ahead and get to the part of the lesson that you want. Okay, our board is dry from the brown stain and we're gonna pick two colors. These are also things that we buy in bulk and then put in these bottles. The bottles are awesome. They're a good size and you don't have to fill them all the time. And we actually can pour the paint in there without making too big a mess. I want a grayish, creamish color, so I don't have one of those. And I encourage you to look around in your craft um, drawer or shelf or wherever you have your paints and stuff like that. And know that you don't have to have a color for everything. You can definitely um, mix and match and literally mix and match. I'm gonna spit a little of the cream out. And I'm just gonna do a little brush mix for that background color. I'm gonna spit this kind of, it's a um, kind of a tanny green taupey color. It's just a kind of neutrally grayish mess. Okay, we're gonna go with our polyfoam brush. Um, notice my polyfoam brush is not very, um, not very straight. Um, when things get dried on the edge, you'll see me standing there and I'll just be picking them off and then you can use the brush again and again until it's just no good. But I don't like the crunchies on there. And so what happens if, if you put your brush in water and you don't submerge it and make sure that it's head down that way, um, then it will get the crunchies on. It'll float and then it will be all crunchy. Okay, so we're just gonna brush mix this and not pick up too much. And then I'll just kind of blot it off a little bit. I'm gonna turn my board so my board, this is the background rustic technique. I want to not be running into my body if I, paint this way, I'm gonna run into my stomach, my side, and all of that. So if I turn my body a little bit, I get a better angle at things. And I just want this kind of scratchy, not very pressury, not base coaty. If you stink at this technique, um, we all have times when things are a challenge, and this is one of the more challenging techniques to do because it's light pressure. And you get globs like this, but paint is your best eraser, and I can show you how to fix that in just a minute. So I'll intentionally mess it up. But if you don't like this technique, you could do a basic um, strong base coat and then you could sand through it, which is what I'm gonna show you on my um, sample I got going. So we'll get this going. And then we've got some mistakes here. So I'm gonna stop with that amount because I think that's enough to show you the technique. I'm gonna submerge my foam brush in the water and I get to a point where I've got like a whole bevy of them in there and they hold each other down. So sometimes that's great. 
All right, I'm gonna pull up our dry board. So you can see, actually, I don't even need those mistakes because I've got some on here that are doing a good job of being a good example. Um, this is also another one of our um, affiliate links. These are sanding blocks. This is weighted, I would say maybe it weighs about a half a pound or so. Um, it might be a little bit less. When you um, put your sandpaper in, notice that there is a big old floppy floppy right there. Um, when you put your sandpaper in, you want it to be tight. It does a much better job tight, and we do have a video on that, and we'll link that below as well. Okay, so this is 60 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna go on here, and I'm gonna dig into it, so you're gonna see me pushing on this. Um, I'm gonna show you this mistake area first. Okay, so we're gonna go here, and I'm gonna dig and see the little stripes that are go coming through there. It's gonna expose the background. This is the best way to make a really distressed wood grain looking background because it's easy. And you notice that when I did the, um, the base coating, I wasn't basing really, um, really heavy. The heavier you base coat, the harder it'll be to get the paint off with the sandpaper. So if you go through too much and you wanna keep your lines straight, um, wood grain doesn't go in circles and it doesn't arch. A lot of people, when they're, you know, it's easy to get into this kind of angle and stuff, you want to keep your lines really straight. And you can go back and forth in areas that have too much paint, like maybe over here. I can just turn it on the side just a little bit and just get that edge taken care of. And I do brush off as I'm going, it's a habit. And somebody mentioned that they had uh, crumbles getting worn into their, their surface. And if you have black that you're sanding through white, sometimes it can smear the colors through the thing if you have crumbles that are a color, okay? So make sure that you go below and subscribe to the channel. We have so many videos and we have so much coming up. Okay, so I think that that is a nice just a nice, eh, nah, I'm not liking how that doesn't look like that. I want it kind of even. Okay, and then I've got a couple of globs over here. Glob is a technical term for where you put the paint down wrong. Okay. Brush it off, you wanna clean your area. This is a black craft mat that is also one of those affiliate lips. I find it very frustrating when I watch gardening videos or DIY videos, if somebody got something from the dollar store or something like that and it was three years ago and you can't get it anymore. So we try to make sure we can source everything we're talking about. Um, next, we are going to go into our 18 inch T-square. It's really nice to keep you straight and in line. So we'll go here and I'm gonna grab this board. I could measure this. I don't like to measure. I could measure this and just go like every three inches and do the thing, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna use my example and guesstimate. So I'll just line that up with where my line is. And then I'm gonna use my triple threat ghost rider. This has got a white, a white lead, a gray lead, and a roller ball with no ink for tracing patterns. And then it's got an eraser on board. They all are refillable and the lines um, erase with water, spit, varnish. You gotta have the, class, the classic spit eraser, right? Just that, oh. um, But it'll erase with an eraser as well. Um, it comes off, so when you use a pencil, a lot of times what happens is you get a smear line and that is um, messy to clean up depending, especially on white or black. Um, both of those are terrible situations. So I'm gonna go in here, see if the white shows up. White does not show up, so that's what I love about having two colors. Okay, make sure our line is sort of where we want our line. Okay, and yep, that's showing. We'll go there. And then we'll go there. Okay, so we've got a couple of ways that we can go about this. We can use a stencil tool. Ah, there's a wreath. 
Okay, so I've got these in the disc ring binders. If you want to see a video on that, we've got bunches of videos that show about stencil storage. This just whoops right out of there. It's got little pinholes that store, and you can keep your stencils in these books and they don't fall out. I don't know how come that works, but it's amazing. Okay, so you can use tape if you wanted to. So you can take your line and you could measure it and measure it and then you've got your tape line. What I don't like about doing tape, um, tape can bend. Um, this we actually call this stretchy tape. So tape can bend and um, you end up with curvy lines sometimes. It's not my favorite way to do the, um, the masking and stuff. Um, you can use your stencil. Okay, and I'm gonna choose a thickness. Do, 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 do. Okay. And then we're gonna tape either side of this stencil right here. Okay, on both sides. And that's gonna do two things for us. It's going to um, mask um, the other lines. So these, what I love about this stencil is when you need straight lines and banding in different sizes, this gives it to you all in one. Seems like you would want to have more than one of these stencils um, or a bigger stencil, but the lines get, the, these don't have bridges and it gets really floppy. So we really like the smaller size and then we just move it down the line. And we'll mask that guy right there. Okay, so I'm gonna find my line. I'm gonna put that in place. Make sure I'm straight on both lines. And then I'm gonna use that tape mask to tape my stencil down. Okay, so that's super cool. That becomes your taping and it really secures things. I'm gonna get out a dome brush. Um, dome brushes are our favorite for not bleeding under because they um, are domed the way that they're cut. I'm gonna get out a dry paper towel and my paint is gonna be dry. So I need to have a brown that is dry brown. So my stain is wet. So I want to have a paint that is thicker and not so wet. So we have brown, this nice dark medium brown. And we dip into our brown, wipe it off in a little swirling motion about 10, 15 times. If you pick this up and you go right here, you're gonna have a mess. If you pick it up with a big poly foam and you and go over here, it's gonna be a mess. If you um, use a, I don't have a flat stencil brush. If you use a flat stencil brush, it can push under. Bleeding under, and I'm going on and on about this because bleeding under is the number one thing that people complain about with stenciling. So I don't want anybody to have a problem. I'm gonna teach and teach and teach and teach it. So we're gonna go over to our stencil. I never put the, um, I never go all the way to this edge because if I do that, it doesn't feather well. So I start away from the edge and you can swirl or you can stipple. Okay, either one is fine. Swirling is a very unnatural feeling thing to do, but it, I really like the softness of the look. So now we'll peek. Okay, we'll get down here. And there we've got a line. So now what we do is we pick it up, and we shove it down, down the line. Okay, so then we get that. And then we continue. So by feathering right there, I connect the two lines easily. And every now and again, I need to give it a little stipple. Stipple does a darker color. What I like about this too, is by the time I get to the end, it's dry or very close to dry. Um, I will keep a blow dryer handy if I wanna move quickly. Okay, and now we're ready to move again. And we just continue that all the way to the end. Oh, and look at, I went to the end. Okay, this is a good thing to do. I love to show how, um, like, I don't know, I'm probably like, I don't know, just a train wreck sometimes in my thinking right here, it goes around in circles and stuff like that. So like, I'll be saying, I don't go to the end of that stencil, but I'm talking to you, so I'm colliding a little bit. So let me show you how to fix it. I love to show how to fix things. So if I just swirl that, you notice that you've got a dark, um, a light demarcation line. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and 
swirl not to the end. Okay, and then I'll pick up some more paint, always swirling on my paper towel. And I'm gonna go over there, and I'm, this is why you don't go to the end because you have to work really hard to get it to, to fade. Now I'm gonna have stenciling over that, so by just ever so lightly tipping, tapping on it, um, it will mask it. It's almost like, you know, when you get a zit on your face and you use a little bit of makeup concealer. Um, that's what I'm doing there. And don't go to the edge. All right, good. Good, good. Okay, so now we're gonna show you tape and how you would do that. Now with tape, you gotta do two passes. I really hate wasting tape too. Okay, so we're gonna put that on there. And I could just go all the way to the edge if I pulled it long enough. So by having that line on there, I can go step by step and tickle it down without curving, okay. Now, with tape, when you're doing tape, you're making a stencil, um, so that's something that's good to know. Okay. And then you use two pieces. Now, see how curved that is? Oh my gosh, it's zoom. Let's get that approximately the same. Gotta do some eyeballing. You gotta make sure you're pressed down, and because you're stenciling with tape, you want to just go through and make a nice crispy edge with your thumbnail or something firm that you can press with. Now you've got a stencil. What I hate about it is I have to use all of this tape for every one of these lines, so I love having the tool better and it went pretty darn fast and with a lot less waste. So now you can just swirl or do the thing. Um, tape has some rules um, that you need to know about. If you don't pull your tape up and you've applied paint, um, a lot of times, you, if you don't pull it up right away, once the tape and the paint bond together, then um, it will lift your um, painted edge and then your edge will be jagged. In this kind of rustic look, it doesn't matter, but um, in a straight, beautiful black and white checkerboard, it would matter. So you wanna be careful to lift your tape right away. Okay. I'll go one more time. Start at the beginning where it was drying. And I'm just swirling. Okay. So we've got that. And then the tape. Um, best way, in this case, you don't really need to do this, but while I'm, we're talking about taping, let's just show you the technique. I like to pull my tape away at a, I think it's a 90 degree angle because it'll cut, that makes like a little scissor right there, and it cuts the edge. So if it has bonded with your paint, then it will pull away. And you can see also with tape, my paint has been only dry. If we can get a close up of this right here, my paint has only been dry for um, maybe a half an hour when I did the prep for this, and the tape lifted my paint off of my board. So I can show you how to fix that. Another reason why I don't like using tape. Okay, so we'll pull that away. And let's show you how to fix that, because I think that's important. Number one, you could fix it just by sanding. So you could just go in here, smooth it out, and that will probably take care of it. If it was worse than that, what you could do is you could go um, paint. What I always say when you're um, fixing things with paint, is go backwards one step and do the thing you were doing before this step. So that was this background, okay? So I'm gonna go into that paint, back one step, and I'm gonna blot it off, and I could take this and I can just feather that in. Paint is your best eraser. I say that all the time because it will fix your mistakes, okay? And if you screw up the whole project and you hate it and you do the thing, Take your sander, give it a little sand, and paint right back over it, and you don't have to waste a board. Okay, so that's how you tape, and that's how you fix it with tape. Okay, now I'm gonna show you one of my favorite new tools. This is a multi-masker, and we're gonna use this to make a banding stencil. Okay, so these are two multi-maskers. What I like about these is when you get into busyness, um, and I don't have an example here today, but, um, ah. So much busy, right? Um, you have 
the white is right next to the, the orange or the yellow color, you have the greenery coming down into things. Um, these little gems will mask the different areas as you're stenciling so you don't make a mess on the next area that you're gonna paint. Okay, so what we're gonna do with these is we're gonna use a little bit of tape. Tape has been the common thread on all of these. And I'm gonna tape through the hole and through, through the circle and through the square. Okay. I hope that you are enjoying learning how to make lines on your projects. You can use this for all of your banding techniques, um, projects if you need, gosh, tea, tea towel stripe details or check stripes or any of that stuff. You can use this, apply it to any project and it's gonna work. Okay, so now let's see if we can find this other line. Okay, I got it. And we're gonna go, we're gonna make this into a little stencil. Okay, so we'll go there and there. Okay, now we take our brush, pick up our paint. We're always on our paper towel, always, always. It seems like a waste of paint, but it would be a bigger waste to have it bleed up underneath all of your stencil and stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna hold down this part and then just swirl. And now we've made a tool out of our two maskers and stuff. So let me show you, that's just a perfectly straight little line. And then I wanted to show you one more thing that you could do instead of tape on here. I think tape is the easiest, but one more really good technique when you're doing this. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. We've got a, a uh, repositionable adhesive, and this works tremendously well as well. And so I'm just going to put it on the stripe that I want to be masked or to be sticky. And it just rolls on there, and then I can set that down and continue a stripe right there. There's my line. That line is invaluable. You wanna make sure you can see your line. Push that down, oh, and I put my stencil in there. Swirl again, it works just like the tape, but one exception. Okay, I've got spaces on either side. If I get in there and I make a mess, so I could mask it. So I'm gonna say tape is the real winner here because I don't wanna mask and mask and mask and mask, or two multi-maskers are a great solution as well. So those are three ways to make some stripes. And now let's talk about regular stenciling the words on. And that is, talk about a couple things here with this. Okay. So we have our stripes made, okay? We want to put our um, word on. And then you could do this all in one color. You could do this. Um, we've got an awesome um, live on Facebook. If you go over to Facebook, we introduced a color tool so you can... Um, see different palettes and stuff like that. Um, but you could take and do a green on there. You could do them in your classic Christmas colors. Like you can do a lot of things. We put a screw on here to hold the wreath. We were talking about the signs that say like home and love and things like that. You could get a seasonal wreath for those signs and then you could put that on and you could put little um, jingle bells or something on here to dress that up even more for this sign. Okay, so just regular stenciling is super simple. You're gonna lay this over the top and you are going to secure it with tape. Tape seems to be our common thread all through this project. Now, if you don't like to, what we recommend is to tape in two places. And so I'll show you what that looks like when you don't do it, okay? So I'm gonna tape on my edge. Notice I have a lot of play right there, okay? Because I only taped in one spot. So I'll get it lined up and tape the other spot, okay? And now when I grab my stencil, I can't shift it very, very well, it loosened up. I can't shift it very hard, very far, okay? Now, because my board is the same size as my stencil, that makes it real easy to tape like that. But if, if I were over here and here, I could tape in these two spots and I would have it secured. If I didn't, if it was, my board was, if my stencil was bigger than my board, and so say we're off the edge over here, I could tape through 
parts of my stencil and then that would secure it. Okay, so that's a really good way to secure your stencil. And we're just gonna show you a little bit of this regular stenciling. And I appreciate you being here today and joining us for this lesson. Okay, so I'm gonna take through the letters because I just really do like that better. Um, and I think I'll go here and here. We'll take our dome brush and our black paint. And make sure that if you have questions or comments, put them below in the comment box. Um, we love questions. Um, we love to answer the questions. If you have good hints and tips for other people that are watching, let us know that too. Um, I think that sharing is caring. Uh, make sure you do share too if you think that this has been valuable. Okay, so in big hole areas like this, we're gonna do a couple of things. One, I would anchor it with my finger on both sides of that. And then I would probably go ahead and stipple um, you could swirl, but you want to be careful when you when you get to these big areas, they're a little bit floppier. So I like to hold it down and I will swirl, apply the black paint. You could decide with the swirling, you can make it dusty or you could um, do two or three coats and make it a more solid coverage. Okay. And that is how you apply paint. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you have learned a lot and I hope that you join us the next time for more videos and more DIY. Have a great day.